Witchcraft in the church. Yes. The new age religion is witchcraft. It's the one world religion of the new world order. So you shouldn't be surprised that witchcraft is surfacing to the top like sharks above water because witches are being recruited through a false light. People are following New Age thinking that they're coming to Jesus, thinking that they're talking to angels, thinking that the witchcraft they're doing is healing people, protecting people, this and that, and it's lies straight from the very pit of hell where they came from. So whereas we have, hold on a sec, all right, <laughs> I had dust right here, and I know the devil would use that to draw your attention away from the message. So anyways, whereas we know there's dark witches that are just flat out with their faith and worshiping of Satan, and they have their pentagrams and their upside down crosses and their gothic look and whatever else, we know of those witches. Those are clear as day out in the open. But these are witches that are being deceived. Okay, just like people who are being deceived in false churches, churches of Satan, that are keeping people lukewarm because they have lukewarm pastors. They don't have the Holy Spirit of God speaking from the pulpit. They have a man on his own understanding who was paid and rewarded by the devil to deceive a mass amount of people in their church. That's exactly what's happening. Prime example of that, Joel Steen. <laughs> there you go. Biggest wolf there is in this world. So with that being said, they get paid really well. They live in wealth and abundance. Why? Because they're deceiving people and the devil is proud of them and he rewards them. We're not gonna get into that. My point here is that there is a false Christianity through witches. They call themselves good witches. No such thing it does not exist. I'm sorry, but you have been led astray. You have been deceived. You need to come away from all witchcraft. There's no such thing as a good witch. I'm sorry, you did not hit the lottery of witches and say, I'm not an evil witch like that one. I'm not going and cursing people out with my spells and hexes and this and that. No. What you're doing is you're doing witchcraft and not realizing you're doing it. And you think you're healing people and you think you're protecting people and whatever else they're teaching you about this false witchcraft that you are learning and you're thinking you're a good witch you think you're you're communicating with angels yeah they're angels fallen angels which are devils you're not communicating with God's angels I promise you that so with that being said they have surfaced to the top because they are Satan's favorite weapon to use. They bring manipulation of confusion, of fear, of doubt. And that's what's happening in this great falling away. Where do you think it's coming from? Witchcraft. What do we wrestle against? Principalities of darkness. Witchcraft. So, with that being said, it aligns perfectly that they're falling away because they're seeking Jesus. I'm going to say Jesus for those of you who say Jesus. It's not bad to say Jesus, but I say Yahushua now. Who are seeking Jesus that... I just lost my train of thought. Okay. That they're going to church in order to do so. Well, you're not going to learn about biblical Jesus if that church is not a spirit-led pastor. Point blank, period. Because if he doesn't know the truth, how can he tell you the truth? If he's not born again and a child of God... How can he help you to become born again as a child of God? Don't you think he would first make himself a child of God before he makes others? So that's what you have to understand. As if that, that pastor on the pulpit <laughs> is not saved, guess what? They're deceiving you. And they are deceived. Either they're doing it intentionally and being rewarded by the devil, or they have an influence over them that is deceiving them and making them believe that they found the jackpot. They found the truth that nobody knows about. And they're going out and sharing that truth. And what you have to understand is that truth is not coming from the Holy Spirit of God. It's coming from their own understanding. And they have this pride behind it because they think they discovered it. Okay, when people who are born again pastors that work for the kingdom of God 
They give all glory to God. All glory and praise goes to God. This information did not come from school. This information did not come from my brain. It came from God's Spirit. He reveals all truth. He revealed this to me. I can't take credit for this. That's someone who's born again. Someone who has pride says, you don't know what you're talking about. Let me teach you. you you're just, you're leaning on your own understanding and this is what it is and blah, blah, blah. There's no love. There's condemning. There's belittling. There's no sharpening of iron. It's just, I want to battle scripture with you. I want to debate and go back and forth and see who's right, who's wrong. So anyways, with that being said, these witches are being used by Satan and they have recruited more witches through this false religion, this false new age garbage from the pit of hell that they do yoga practicing and meditation, they have crystals and cards which are tarot reading cards and they're thinking this is biblical, they're thinking this is holy, they're thinking this is communicating with God and it's not. You're communicating with devils and you need to realize that. For one, you can't communicate with the dead. There's no more memory of them as the scriptures say. So if you think you're talking to your grandmother who's passed away, you're talking to a devil who is disguising themselves as your grandmother, who has the voice of your grandmother. It's not your grandmother, I promise you. You really think you could go to the grave where your grandmother died and you can talk into the ground and your grandmother will speak to you? It's not gonna happen. What makes you think her spirit is gonna stay on this earth after she passes away and is gonna say, hey, I missed you. I know you've been thinking about me, so here I am just for your convenience. So that way you don't have to feel like I'm dead anymore. No, you're tampering and conjuring up devils and you need to stop and you need to repent and you need to ask the Lord for forgiveness for doing so. You were deceived to do so. And if you're doing it purposely, then you're not deceived to do so. You're just foolish to do so. You still need to repent. But anyways, the reason that sin has surfaced, iniquity has abound, is because of witchcraft being put on this earth and because of the Antichrist spirit of Barack Obama. When he was president, he came in an illegal U.S. citizen, uh, as an illegal U.S. citizen, okay, as an illegal immigrant coming as a U.S. citizen. He altered his birth certificate, all that. I've already have it on my page, on my channel. We're not going to get into that. But what my point here is that brought the wickedness in this world. And that's why people start having hatred toward each other. People are, you know, um, rioting against cops, chaos breaking out, unforgiveness, revenge seeking. It's because the Antichrist spirit resides in the U.S., Okay, so, and witches are very busy putting their curses all over, um, all over towns and cities and states and countries and whatever. So, with this being said, my point of this video is witches in the church. If you are that person who goes to a church and you are blessed to find a spirit-led church, which is like finding a needle in a haystack in these days, these end days. If you are blessed to find that church because God led you to that church, thank Him. Thank Him, be grateful, soak up that information like a sponge because you won't find it anywhere else. And finding the truth these days is like one in a million. That's your odds. Online, on YouTube, especially now that they censored all truth and removed it all, now it's nothing but lies, it's nothing but confusion, it's nothing but division. Okay, it's nothing but false light. It's what they want you to learn. It's what they want to condition you with. They don't want you to know the truth. They revealed, I mean, they removed the truth. They censored it. So what are they going to leave you with? More truth? No, they're going to leave you with lies. So with these churches, if the pastor's not spirit-led, guess what? No witch needs to be present. Because if there's no truth being told, what do they need to stop you from hearing? Nothing. They want you to be wide awake are you listening are you listening to the pastor telling you lies are you feeding off of it are you applying it to your life that's what they want so why does a witch need to be in that church they don't the person on the pulpit is telling lies 
And it's no coincidence that people are wide awake, listening. People are enjoying themselves listening. They're standing up out of their seat praising. And they're thinking, this is from God. And this is a lukewarm church. And this lukewarm church is leading people right into the lake of fire. Because they are teaching you lukewarm, unbiblical teachings. Which prevents you from having a relationship with God. It's like they want you to believe that what they're telling you is having you grow with the Lord. Is having you be a disciple. Is telling you that you're saved and you're now a child of God. But if you are not that person that is wise enough to know that your salvation's on the line. Your eternal salvation or eternal damnation. And you're going to put it in the hands of that pastor. You're not going to go to the very word of God as the final authority to confirm what they're saying and to say, okay, well, if they say I'm born again, then I'll have a renewed mind. Do I have a renewed mind that seeks to do what is righteous and holy or do I still watch horror films and do I still love celebrities and idolize them and want to be like them? Okay, then it says you'll have a renewed heart made of flesh, not of stone. So you have a fleshly heart. Okay, this is according to the pastor saying you're born again because you got baptized physically underwater. So now you're like, okay, I go to the Word of God. If I'm born again, the Word of God will tell me. And I already have videos on here that give you signs, all biblical, that you are born again. So check that video out. I think it's like a three-part video or two-part video. So go look and see if you're really born again because I go right through the scriptures and I give you signs that tell you you're born again. This, God says this will happen. God says you will have this. God says you will be like this. God says you will not desire or crave this. And it's all there. So, with that being said, you got to be that wise person that says, I'm not just going to take the pastor's word for it. This is my salvation for eternity. This is my damnation for eternity. It's one or the other. You want to just take someone's word for it? I wouldn't want to. It's not like going to see a movie and someone says, oh, that's a crappy movie or that's a good movie. You take their word for it. That's not a big deal. This is your salvation or damnation for eternity. This is not a trial. This is for eternity. I'm pretty sure you want to make sure that you're following biblical Jesus. That you are, in fact, born again. Because Jesus said you must be born again of the Spirit of God in order to see the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't say you must own a Bible, you must go to church on Sunday, you must claim to be a Christian, you must be born again, and you must follow the commandments of God. So, with that being said, you got the, the, the pastors that are spirit-led, and I bet you anything, those witches are right there, front and center, because they want their witchcraft over the church to put the church asleep, okay? They are preventing people from learning the truth so that way that seed of truth is not being planted within that person. Because God gives water and gives growth through watering that seed that has been planted from a vessel that he is using, a servant, a disciple, a child of his, whatever. And they don't want that opportunity. They don't want you to hear truth and have it transform you through conviction. They don't want you to hear that you're a sinner. They want, once you hear the pastor saying, and you guys should realize that you are all sinners who were born into sin, including myself. They don't want you to hear that. They want you to hear, and the news on today's, uh, and the sports, sports team, this, ha uh, the sports team going on right now, oh, they just got a touchdown and blah, blah, blah. Like they want a distraction, basically is what I'm trying to say. I couldn't think of a good example. You ever seen that commercial? where the girl is speaking to her boyfriend and it just goes in one ear and out the other, like he's not listening. And when she's talking, you hear her talking, but then it just, the talking goes away and the guy's just like zoning out. That's what these witches want. They don't want you to accept the information. They don't want you to hear it. They don't want it to be fed to you. They don't want it to plant a seed of faith within you. They want to bring you to sleep because if you're sleeping, you're not paying attention, right? If you're watching TV and you fall asleep, are you watching TV? No. The TV's on in the background and you're asleep. 
Are you knowing what's going on on the TV just because it's on? No. You're knocked right out. So it's a pretty good chance that if you're falling asleep at church, that church is probably telling the truth. Because why would the devil attack a church that's telling lies and put you to sleep? No, he wants you wide awake. He wants you feeding right into his lies. And guess what that is? School. School is what conditions us in the mindset of mankind that the devil wants us to believe and think and live by. School. It's boot camp for children. And it's boot camp for adults. So, you have to understand that we're forced to go to school. It's the law for a reason. Because if it wasn't the law, no one would go. So they make it a law, so that way it's mandatory, and you can't say no, and you get conditioned, and so on and so forth. We're not going to go into that. So my point is, there's witches in the church trying to put people to sleep, trying to prevent souls from being saved. If you are in a church and you are falling asleep, there's most likely a witch there, 100%, trying to put you to sleep so that way you don't gather the information being spoken to you. It doesn't convict you and transform you from a sinner who admits they're a sinner, who realizes they need Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior over their life and to follow Him. They don't want that. So you have to understand that it is very dangerous to be in a physical building these days, especially if you're a child of God. If you're a child of God, you already have the truth. You go into a church of lies, now you got confusion. You don't need to be in church. I'm not saying don't fellowship. I'm just saying it's very dangerous in these end days to go to a physical church building when most of these churches are wolves at the pulpit. So you're saying, I'm a child of God, I know the truth, but I've come to learn lies. Does that make sense to you? Someone who's not born again, they don't have an option. They don't have a choice. They don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of them, teaching them truth. So they have to start at the basics, which is church. But even they don't have to do that. All you do is get the Word of God, KJV. You pray before you read and you ask God to reveal His Word to you through His Holy Spirit alone, that you do not lean on your own understanding of the Scriptures. That He reveals any mysteries from heaven, every, any revelations He wants you to know about. Anything He wants to point out to you. That's how He speaks to you. God can speak to you. He doesn't need a man up on the pulpit in order to do so. It's beneficial if they're born again. But like I said, these end days, it's not wise. So, take from this what you will. Pray and seek confirmation from the Lord. If He wants you to just be at home with your Bible and having him speak to you and grow with grow with you that way or if he wants to lead you to a church that is spirit led that you don't have to worry about but you listening right now pray about the church you're in don't just say like this is the greatest church and blah 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 and this must be of god don't assume pray and seek confirmation even if you love it and you've been there for years someone could be deceived for 10 years and not even know it they could be deceived the rest of their lives and not even know it. Look at the Catholics. They think because they're baptized as babies that they're saved. Where in the Bible does it say if you're baptized underwater, you're saved? It doesn't. It's a remission of sins. It's admitting you're a sinner and asking God to forgive you. It's not, I'm saved by water. You're saved by the blood of Jesus. You're saved by the gift of God. Jesus dying on the cross is the ultimate sacrifice, lamb sacrifice for all mankind who receive his gift. That's what you're saved by. So you have to understand these Catholics, and I've exposed them. This is Mother Harlot Church, Mystery Babylon, Rome. These Catholics think they're saved, but yet if they really believe they're saved, then why is it their life does not align with Scripture? That says... If someone is saved, this is how you will live. All they take is my priest or my father or whatever told me that I'm saved now. And that's good enough for them. If that's good enough for you, I'm sorry. You're going to live the rest of your life being deceived 
and when you die, you're going to end up in the lake of fire for eternity. Unless you repent and turn away from that harlot, from that church, and give your life to Jesus Christ and follow Him as Lord and do as He says according to His Word. Other than that, you're going to be deceived for the rest of your life. You have to realize, you who claim to be saved as a baby who doesn't even know who God is, is going to say, because my parents baptized me, I'm now saved, so I have nothing to worry about. So I can go and live in sin like the rest of the world and be like the rest of the world. And the only difference is I will claim Jesus in my life because of my religion. But yet, your life does not align with what Scripture says someone who is saved will be like. And that doesn't concern you one bit. That doesn't make you question your life. Like, wow, 10 years, 10 years in now I've been saved. Now you'd be 10 years old. Uh, well, not 10 years old, but you'd be like 11 or 12. So let's just say 20 years, 20 years I've been saved, supposedly, through a, a water baptism as a baby. And that's actually a satanic ritual, but we're not going to go there. So you think you're saved these 20 years, but now I'm challenging you to go look up that video on my channel, Signs of Being Born Again, and you tell me that you can read those scriptures and when you read them, and I read them to you, you read them, you can truly tell me, yep, that's me. That, yep, that's me too. That, yes, that's my life. Yes, that's how I am. You won't be able to, I promise you. And the reason I know this is because you are at the church of Satan in a false light. And the reason I know this is because you trust in your underwater baptism not in Jesus Christ dying on the cross. That's where your problem is. So, if you are at a church that is telling lies, you think every Sunday you're growing, but you think you're growing only because you trust the pastor to be telling the truth. Who says he's telling the truth? Is there a lie detector test that every pastor has to take before he can be a pastor up on the pulpit? If that were the case, that would be great. But even lie detectors, people can lie over those. It's technology. It has flaws. It was created by Satan. So you have to understand that there is no lie detector test that says, because this person is up on the pulpit, they know the truth because God has spoken all truth to them. Unless they are born again, God is speaking through them. But if they're not born again, they went to some school who that teacher was not born again and taught them something and said, you're now a pastor. Go and share the good news with everybody. But yet they were told lies. They were taught lies about the Bible. They twisted scripture, didn't realize they were doing it. They misunderstood it, they took it out of context. They leaned on their own understanding, whatever. And now they're going out thinking they're God's gift on earth to be a pastor. You have to understand this is very dangerous because if you are in that church with that pastor, you're believing that you're growing with the Lord because you're believing that pastor knows what he's talking about and you're trusting that he has a relationship with God and you're learning from him. But guess what? You want to find out come judgment day that you were following a pastor who was deceiving you or who was deceived himself? I don't think you want to wait until that very last moment where it comes time to if you're guilty or innocent. You don't want to be there. Trust me, because you're going to be that person that says, Lord, I've been in church every Sunday. This pastor's great. He knows you. He speaks about you all the time. And Jesus will say, I do not know this pastor. What are you talking about? And what are you going to say in that moment? Your whole life is going to flash through your head like a movie. And you're going to realize what grave error, what grave mistake you made. You trusted so long in this pastor, in this church in this doctrine that they're teaching you, in this gospel that they're sharing with you. And it's not biblical. And it has nothing to do with God. It's deception. And you come find out Judgment Day, where it says, we will find out today where you are going, either to heaven or to the lake of fire. You want to wait until that moment? Or you want to be sure that you are following the truth because you took the responsibility to look into the Word of God and make sure what you're learning is truth. 
Because I'm telling you, these witches are not just in physical church buildings. They're on online ministries too. They're called monitoring spirits. And they're in online ministries. Making sure to bewitch those who are following this ministry. Whatever ministry it is that is of God. They don't want people to learn the truth. So they can't silence the person speaking. They can try to distract them away into sin and keep them busy with that. They can try to distract them away with people in their life and keep them busy with that so they don't have time to be on ministry. But if they're on ministry and they're speaking truth, these witches are trying to keep people who are following that page and learning from that page from trusting in that truth. They're putting confusion in their mind of like, I don't understand what he's saying. I don't understand what the scripture means. He's saying it, but I just can't understand it. They're putting... Um, they're the, it's like a bearing of false witness basically like they're painting a picture that is bad of that pastor and saying look at this pride that this pastor has and there is no pride but they want you to view the pastor in a bad way so that way they can remove you from learning the truth and this is what they do I've seen it clear as day it's happened with my ministry thousands of times so you have to be careful you have to be careful where you're learning from who you're learning from and you can't make a mistake with learning right directly from the Word of God through the Holy Spirit of God. There's no error to happen there. It cannot happen. But if you choose to learn online, there's a possibility you can be deceived. If you choose to go buy a number one selling book from some author who claims to know God, there's a possibility you can be deceived. If you want to listen to a friend who claims to be Christian, there's a possibility you can be deceived. You want to learn from your pastor at church on Sunday? Possibility you can be deceived. The only way you're going to know if you're being deceived is by comparing what you are learning from anybody about God and going into the Word and making sure it's there. If it's not there, it's not truth. And it's not from God. And if it's there, it's going to be there in context. You can't twist this and say, it's not really there, but if you move this and twist this around, there it is. I see it now. It doesn't work that way. It's there written as it is. God does not change. So, heed, take heed to this warning. Do what you will with this message. But there are witches in the church. And they're trying to keep people lukewarm. They're trying to keep people from growing with the Lord to even coming to know the Lord, to even following the Lord, and they're trying to keep them thinking that they can be Christian and still have a relationship with the world. So it's a worldly church, not a holy church. So what is a worldly church? It's a church of the devil. He's the God of this world, lowercase g. So it's his church. It's his way of training you up and teaching you just like school. Instead of it being school, it's called church. But it's the same concept. A pastor up there teaching you lies. A teacher up there teaching you lies. Same concept. So, warn people. Pray about this. Seek confirmation. Use the word of God as your final authority. Don't take anybody's word, not even my own. I will never deceive you. It's not my intention. Okay, I'm not allowed to lie. I'm not allowed to deceive but don't take my word for it because someone else could say that who is trying to deceive you. So you can take what I'm saying as comfort until you go in the word and compare, but don't just listen to what people have to say because deceivers don't say I'm coming to deceive you. They say, you can trust me. I know God, I'm a prophet. I know everything about God. You wanna know, just come to me. You don't need to open your Bible. I know the Bible in and out, I can teach you. They're not going to come saying, I'm trying to deceive you right now. Are you going to listen to my lies? No, you shouldn't be in the Bible because the Bible's truth. We don't want you to know the truth. I want you to trust in me so I can lie to you. And you should go to that church down the street where the pastor is paid to lie to people. They're not going to come that way. So it's your responsibility to take your salvation seriously. And compare everything you hear about God that has to do with God. I don't care what it is. It will be in the word of God. If it is truth. 
and if it came from the Holy Spirit. So God bless you guys. Yahusha loves you. Have a blessed day.